I guess I should probably open the blinds. Uh, echo. Turn on the beer. I love the flickering cold start of fluorescent lights. So, wow, it's like almost one o'clock p.m. I got up at like noon, but then I also went to bed at midnight. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so not quite sure what to do with myself. I know I've got a lot of stuff I can work on around here, but having goodwill not available to me is probably one of the more annoying things because I spend a lot of time, well, a lot of time, um, commuting between their stores. But anyways, I'm not even sure what I'm saying right now. Um, I'm gonna finish waking up and then we'll figure out what's going on. Oh, now I remember. I, um, ooh. <laughs> okay, uh, apparently my left arm will not hold the camera right now. Maybe if I... Yeah. So I went to turn on the computer I use as a file server and like storage and it's where most of my data from all the videos and everything is stored. I turned it on yesterday, then I came back out here to, I don't know, heat up a burrito or something. And then I went to log into it from this laptop and it wasn't working. So I went back in there five or 10 minutes later. Turns out when I hit the power button, the power button stuck and the machine had been sitting there turning on and off for like 10 minutes. And apparently it damaged the logic board or did something because now it doesn't work at all. Um, I, uh, I did a little bit of troubleshooting on it, but I think I'm gonna have to buy another one. Luckily those old Mac Pros are fairly inexpensive. Like you can get a chassis with a logic board for like maybe 150 bucks. So I'm gonna have to find one of those now, but I don't know how soon that's gonna happen because electronic stores are not Eh. Let's just say it's annoying. The data is backed up in theory. Like about 75% of it is backed up and the rest of it is redundant on separate drives. But one of the drives has to work before the data backup will work. And yeah, I guess worst case scenario, it only lose like 25% of non-essential data. But I just hate this kind of stuff. Um... I'm gonna eat some breakfast now. By the way, I wasn't eating a burrito, it just sounded funny. <laughs> okay, um, obviously lots of things are going on everywhere, and, well, I wanna have some fun today, but I also need to go to the grocery store. So I asked myself, how do I combine those two things? That's easy. <laughs> we take the Quantum 6000Z to the grocery store, and there's pretty much nobody in the grocery stores at this point, so, nice, smooth, flat surface with a really fast chair. Um, hopefully it makes me smile. <laughs> um, but yeah, I gotta go pick up some more groceries and stuff. So, yeah, let's head over there and see how it is. I think they have hours for the elderly and disabled, but I'd have to get up at like 6 a.m. or something. And, eh, I don't know. I'll, I'll find out about it while I'm there. Um, so it looks like we're back to normal busyness here. Dang it. Uh, all right, well, I'm not gonna play this game today. I'm gonna go to a different, whoop. I'm gonna go to a different grocery store. I am not willing to go into this place. This one's sort of like a main location for a bunch of stuff around here or like people live around here so we're gonna do this whole thing again i'm gonna drive a little ways out of town and uh there should be one that's not nearly as busy that's sort of like tucked up in the woods okay this one is also pretty busy um hmm
Well, that was kind of a bust. Um, so the plan is that second grocery store I went to, they're open until midnight. So I'm gonna go back there about 11.30 tonight. And I've been there a couple of times late at night and there's no one around. But what's weird is, I mean, I guess it is Friday, but all the traffic, all the parking lots, all the businesses, everything looks like a normal Friday. So I don't know if people are stocking up for the weekend or what exactly is going on, but it's business as usual around here at the moment. Um, so eh, I guess late night shopping it is. So I figure this is as good a time as any to do a little bit of programming on this Quantum because it currently has a stock tune on it and it needs to be addressed just a little bit. Um, this is one of the Curtis 1313 programmers. It's a 3309 and it uses the XLR five pin interface. So your little pins go on the top and you basically just plug this into the joystick. Bottom part plugs into this thing and then it'll load up all the data. Now this isn't gonna be a guide on like how to program. I'm just gonna kind of show some of the settings that I change on a chair that has stock settings on it. So we go into program adjustments here, hand control settings, and then drive. And this will give us all of our profiles here. I've got profiles one through four set up on this thing currently. And profile four is set to 100%. Um, I would like to turn up the acceleration on it a little bit. Okay, so it's set at 50 right now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and set this up to 70. And then deceleration, I'm gonna turn that up a little bit to 75, actually probably 80. Yeah, no, 75. When you start getting into the higher end of the percentages on these things, little tiny bits make a huge difference. And then turning speed, I think is okay, but I wanna turn up the turning acceleration, uh, cause right now when you go to turn, it accelerates quickly and starts to get kind of weird. So uh, actually, let me test that real quick. It's on profile four. Yeah, there we go. I want it to be a little bit more precise and, whoops. I want it to be a little bit more precise and react very quickly. So if I go to turn, it does it pretty quick. And I usually want the acceleration rate pretty high and the speed fairly low on that. Uh, so you don't get this like whiplash style effect going on. Speed max turn rate. So I believe that's what makes you slow down um, when you're turning. I'm gonna have to test it. I'm gonna set that to 100% right now and then we'll do some testing. And then reverse speed max is 100, and I want to set everything the same for reverse. So I think I what, had that at 70 just now. And then reverse deceleration, what did we set that to, 75? Yeah, 75. I like to have forward and back set exactly the same. That way, if I have to jump out of the way quickly backwards, which happens sometimes in crosswalks or other situations, um, you can just jump out of the way, basically. And yeah, power 100%. All right, cool. Uh, I think we're good to do a test run here. Uh, the way it works on this chair is you can just leave this plugged in. All the changes you make are live. So basically you can leave it plugged in and uh, test your changes immediately. actually pretty good. Uh, now we're gonna adjust profile three. It just needs very minor tweaking 
to uh, work a little bit better indoors. Actually, let me test my turn rate again here. There's a lot of trial and error when it comes to programming quantums. Okay, so we're gonna bump this thing down to profile three. And then max speed was set to 70%. I think that's pretty good. The Ford acceleration, I feel like, well actually, I'm gonna lower the top speed to 60% as the cops go flying by. I'm going to lower the top speed to 60%. By the way, these are multiplier buttons. Um, if you just push up and down on this, it goes one at a time. But if you hold X10 or X100, it changes the value based on that. So every time you hit the button, it goes 10%. I'm still getting a little bit of weird acceleration curve, so I'm going to go ahead and set this acceleration to 40 with a max speed of 60. So it should make it precise, but it shouldn't turn into a rocket ship on you. And then also you can use this little dial here to tone it down a little bit while you're indoors as well. Okay, forward deceleration. I wanna turn that up for sure because I've almost bumped into things in the house a couple of times. So we'll try that at 65. Uh, turning speed, that was pretty good. Uh, 40 is too high. So we're gonna turn up the turning acceleration just a touch. Let's go 55. Turning decel. Um, let me test that here real quick. Okay, turning deceleration seems real good. If you turn that up too high, you get a jolt when it stops. And my goal is to have it be pretty smooth and linear. Um, but doing that just now, I realize that my turning speed, um, acceleration's good, but I'm gonna bump the speed up to 35. Let's try that again. Okay, that seems pretty good. I might fine tune that later. Uh, deceleration seems good. And then once again, we're gonna mimic all the settings for reverse because I want it to respond exactly the same forward and backwards. I don't wanna have to remember that it's different when you're backing up. You know, it takes a little bit of screwing around. I just try and do a bunch of maneuvers and try to like turn around things and see how it responds to see how it feels to test it. But you still have to kind of, um, use it a bunch and then make some more fine tuning. That feels pretty good. Um, I'm gonna turn down, let's see here, what's it called? I'm gonna turn down the max turn speed rate a little bit. We're gonna put that to like 60 just because it felt a little bit wobbly as I was accelerating. Obviously chairs take a little bit to get used to, but um, I don't want to have to overcorrect when I'm inside the house and play with the joystick too much. Okay, that seems to feel pretty good. I think what I'm gonna do is turn up the tremor dampening just a tiny bit, just to make it a little bit less sensitive and jittery. Uh, the program's good, I don't wanna adjust it anymore because um, that's gonna affect how it is. And my thing is like, if you're facing the wall and like your phone's behind you and it starts ringing, I wanna be able to turn around quickly and not have to sit there and feel like I'm waiting for the chair to respond. Uh, so there's sort of a fine line between moving quickly and not having the thing throw everything off your lap. But I don't want to feel like I'm sitting there waiting. I'm like, come on, let's turn, come on. I don't remember where the trimmer dampening is. I don't think it was in here. Oh, I wonder if it's global on this one, trimmer suppression. Oh, it is. Trimmer suppression is global. Um, well, I'm gonna set it to five. Yeah, so when you change this setting, the chair has to be rebooted. So it goes into uh, I don't know if you can see that. Well, I can't move now, but it's, uh, it goes into like this idle mode and uh, you have to power cycle it from this point to uh, get it to work again. But we're gonna set the trimmer suppression. Oh, you can only go in percentages of 10. 
Uh, I feel like 10 might be too much. Well, we'll try it. Anyways, um, I think that's gonna be good for now. The thing to remember with these settings is, everyone asks me all the time, like, hey, what are good settings? Like, I've got a programmer, what should I set my chair to? There isn't a way to do that. Every chair is different, the weight of every user is different, and you can't just plug the same values in. Like, even the same chair, like say there was another chair just like this one that someone else I know had and they're about the same weight, plugging in those same values may not net the same results. So it, it's one of those things where sometimes, you know, dealers are gonna charge you hourly to use these things or they're gonna do it for you, but you can't just one and done. You can't just say, oh, we're gonna turn this up, there you go. You've gotta spend a little bit of time with them and make changes, run around, go through their shop, try to mimic things like, you know, turning around corners and doing what you do inside your house. And I mean, I've never been able to adjust one of these chairs without a minimum of like three to four test runs. And that's really pushing it. Uh, some of these things I'll spend 45 minutes getting them tuned like just right. So it's one of those deals where, I mean, I found this thing on eBay for like a good deal. It was like, I don't remember it. It was like 300 bucks or something, but it was way cheaper than you can normally get these for. But unfortunately, these are not super readily available or cheap. Um, but anyways, that, that's just kind of what I do on this chair. Um, I'm gonna run around the house in this thing for a little while, just, just because, I don't know why, I wanna try something different. And uh, I'll let you know if I have to come back out here and make any changes. But yeah, I think, uh, I think that's good for now. Hey Siri, what is Tiger King? Tiger King Murder, Mayhem, and Madness, titled on screen as simply Tiger King, is a 2020 true crime documentary miniseries about the life of Joseph Allen Maldonado Passage, popularly known as Joe Exotic. Should I keep going? No way. So apparently this is some sort of ultra popular thing, and when stuff gets too popular, I feel like I don't want to watch it but I don't really care about not knowing about things that people are talking about, but everyone on YouTube seems to be doing parodies of it. Um, it's not like I'm, it's not like we were secretly gonna watch it. I don't, I don't think that's gonna happen, but if you have seen it, you should probably tell me why I shouldn't watch it in the comments, because <laughs> I, I don't think I'm feeling this. <laughs> Wait, why did you load Netflix? Oh, it's like on the main page. Demonetized. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Well, that was a waste of a trip. So, for work, I had to come out and pick some stuff up, and the place I'm making the pickup closes at 3.30, apparently. Um, kind of some odd hours, but it's currently 334 and no one's in the building huh well um i guess that was a wasted trip what's odd though i'm in this starbucks parking lot here um and uh it's like empty there's no one around i mean there's a little bit of traffic on the roads today it, there's definitely a lot more yesterday and this weekend than there has been for the last couple of weeks but uh yeah, just kind of strange how nobody's around. I mean, it makes sense, but I understand why, but it's just weird actually seeing it. Um, well, uh, I guess I'll head back. So, we've kind of got to the point here where I got my storage unit emptied, both of them, and the garage is kind of full of stuff at the moment. I need to do quite a bit more sorting out there before I actually have room to work on stuff in the garage. And you know, we are in Portland, so it rains quite a bit. And doing stuff in the driveway doesn't happen as easily when it's raining. So while there are a lot of random projects I could work on here, like for example, getting that remote control Power Wheels BMW thing working, I gotta clean the garage a little bit first before that can happen. And when I start doing too much stuff, my arms and shoulders and everything aren't so happy. Insert excuse here. But obviously right now, going out and running around is not something that is necessarily as doable. So running around on trails and visiting other places and doing stuff. I'm just gonna be film filming random stuff like this, I think for now. I'm not sure what else to do. And it gives me something to kind of keep doing because 
when you're sitting home doing nothing, your brain starts wandering and you start thinking about other stuff like, I don't know, pain or whatever. So this gives me kind of a routine or something to do. There is some footage, some of it is a little bit older and some of it is more recent. I'm gonna be, well, there's gonna be another clip that I'm publishing on the other channel later tonight. People have asked, why is there another channel? Well, that's the one that I started originally back in 2006 when YouTube first launched. And I just kind of publish extra footage on that one that I think some, wow, that was a large V8. I post stuff on there that some people might be interested in watching, just me working on random projects, like this little mixer right here for my stereo, I take that apart and repair it. And then there's some other things that are just kind of off or strange, or maybe the camera work wasn't as good or whatever, but anyways, there's a lot of footage I don't use, I just dump on that channel. And I don't know, some people may say, oh, you should just put it on this one, but I don't know, I, I feel like there's a certain I don't know, I won't say like level of professionalism because none of this is professional. <laughs> but anyways, there's a link down below for that channel. Um, it's been in the description for quite some time. But if you want to check that out, I dump shorter clips there, just non-polished things. There's no intros or music or anything. It's just me working on some random task or whatnot. But anyways, I'm going to keep this up. Um, I was aiming for every two days, uh, two or three days, I think is probably what we're looking at here. But uh, yeah, I'm going to keep making videos. I uh, got to have something for me to do and obviously people are looking for stuff to watch. So we're going to keep up the rhythm, see if we can keep this going for a while. I mean, I don't know what else I would be doing. <laughs> well, not like I have nothing to do. I'm just saying, I don't know what I'm saying. Again, I say that a lot. But anyways, I'll catch you guys in a couple of days. And if you want some other random footage, link down below.